Again, welcome to CS101, Introduction to Programming Using Python. This lab work covers chapter four of our course textbook. We are going to use the for loop or the while loop to solve two problems, which is the, again, the repetition control structures. So our first problem is budget analysis. Here they say we should write a program that asks the user to enter the amount that he or she has budgeted for a month. Also a loop should then prompt the user to enter each of his or her expenses for the month. So again, the expenses can be more than one. Example can be rent, transportation, feeding, etc. And also they keep the running total. So anytime we enter the expenses, we are going to add it to the previous total. So this is the why we need a loop. Now, when the loop finishes, the program should display the amount that the user is over or under budgeted. So the first thing we do, we declare our variables to store the budget amount and also the amount spent and the differences. The differences will be the difference between the budget amount and also the amount spent then also the total expenses. So we initialize our budget variable to zero, the difference is also to zero. And also we have a variable name spent, we initialize it to one, and this is to initialize for while loop. And also we initialize the total to zero. So the first thing we need to do is to get our input. So we are going to get the budgeted amount from the user. So the user will enter the amount budgeted for the amount. Uh, for the amount is, uh, is a string, so we convert it to float and we assign to the budget variable. Now using the while loop, as we said, we are using the spent as our sentinel, I would say a sentinel value for while loop. So here we say why the spent not equal to zero. We can now tell the user to enter because again, we don't know how many, in our previous example, we use a for loop because we know how many times the loop will execute. Here we are using the while loop because we don't know how many expenses and the user have. One user may have four different types of expenses. Another user may have six or seven or eight different types of expenses. So here we are using the while loop. So the first thing we need here is getting our input, which is our budgeted amount. Then now we are going to get the actual expenses that we did. Then the, the reason, that's the reason why we are using the loop because the expenses may be more than one type of expenses. So we are using while loop again because one user may have only two expenses, another user may have 20 expenses. So we're using while loop with a sentinel value. So here we say, why the spend not equal to zero? We ask the user to enter the amount spent. Now, when the user enters zero, the while loop will stop because the condition will be false. Here we say spent not equal to zero. So if it's equal to zero, then it will stop. So that's our sentinel value to stop the loop. Again, why we are doing this because the expenses for two different users may be different amount. Yeah, how many times different types? So here, when we enter the expenses, we add it to our previous total. So we have total plus equal spent, which means total equal to total plus spent. Then from there, we're going to determine whether the user is over or under budget. So again, we use the while loop here just to get our total expenses from the user. The reason why we are using a sentinel value because again, as we said, there may be more than, the user may have five different type of expenses. Another user may have 20 different type of expenses. So after the user enter all the expenses finish and enter zero to quit the while loop, then we come here to determine whether the user is over or under budgeted. So here we have a print statement to print the budgeted amount, which was given uh, as input. And also we are using the format function because we want to format to two decimal places the amount budgeted. 
then we say the spent will be the total. So in the while loop, anytime we enter again, anytime we enter amount we spend, we had it to the previous total. So the total variable here contains the total expenses. And we already entered the budgeted amount as our input. So now we're going to find the difference of the two would tell us whether one is over budgeted or under budgeted. Now difference can be negative or positive value depends. So the first thing we said here is that if the budget is greater than total, then we find a difference which will be budget minus total because we want the difference to be of positive value. So here, since the budget is greater than the total, it means we over uh, on the budget, the amount we spend is less than the budgeted amount, which is good. So here we say the format, the difference amount, we find the difference of the budget and total. Then we say it's under budget, which is good, well done. Now, if the budget is less than total, it means we spend more than what we budgeted. So we find the difference of the total minus budget. Now we want the difference to be positive value. That's why here, when the budget is greater than the total, we say budget minus total. But when the budget is less than total, we say total minus budget. But again, here we understood that if this is true, it means we spend too much. It means again, the budget was less than the total amount we spent. So the output here will be the difference of the amount. And then we say next time plan better or plan better next time. Else, this means the spending matches the budget because we have three options. Either we spend more than our budget or we spend less than our budget or we spend exactly the same amount. So the first if statement tell us if our budget is greater than total, which means we spend less than our budget. The next elif, if budget is less than total, which means we spend more than our budget. Else, we spend the same amount as and the budgeted amount. So this is good planning. Now let's look at the second problem. So here we are going to write a program with a loop that will ask the user to enter a series of positive numbers. The user should enter a negative number to signal the end of the series. Then after all the positive numbers have been entered, the program should again display their sum. So this means we have to use a while loop again with the, uh, the sentinel value will be a negative value. Because here they say write a program with a loop that asks the user to enter a series of positive numbers. Now, the user should enter a negative number to signal the end of the series. So when the user enter a negative number, the while loop will stop. That's a sentinel value. Then it will give us the sum of all the previous positive numbers we enter. So first we have a variable name number and we are going to use it to initialize for the while loop. Since again, we are using a sentinel value. Then the variable total, this is where we are going to put our total amount for all the positive values we enter. So now continue adding numbers while they are positive. So we said that while the number is greater than zero, which means it's a positive number, we ask the user to enter the number, enter a positive number but it's going to enter negative to quit because when the user enter a negative value, the Y loop condition here will be false. And as we said, if a condition is false, the loop will stop. So user enter positive number. Here we check that the number is positive. So ask not to change value of the total because if the number is negative, we don't want to add it to the total. So that's why we have the condition here that if the number is greater than zero, then we're going to add it, add it to the total. Now, if the last if the last value is negative, we are not going to add it. Then we come out of the for loop, I mean the while loop, then we print our results. So sometimes we can use the for loop. For example, if they say we should write a program to find the sum of numbers from one to 100, 
I know the loop will execute 100 times. So in this case, I'll use the for loop. If I know how many times. Here again, we don't know how many times the loop will execute, how many positive values we have. So a user may run this program and may enter uh, the first value will be negative value. So that means the total will be zero. Because if it's negative value, it's, let's say negative two, it's negative two greater than zero, no. So we cannot enter any value no more. We come out of the for loop. We display the total value, but the total value initially is zero. Now, if user enter a positive value, let's say 20, and another 30, and negative two, then it will give us 50. Because here we can see the first positive value is the normal positive value, yes, then we add it to the total. So if it's 20, it will be zero plus 20. Then we ask the user to enter a number again. We keep entering, there's a positive value again. We add it. Now, if you enter negative value, we cannot add because the number negative is less than zero, so we can add it. Then we check the number, oh, it's, the number is negative value. So negative value should be less than zero. So this means the while loop condition is false. We come out of the loop. So that would be the conclusion of this lab work. Here we solve two questions using a while loop. As we said in the lectures also, four loops are very good and actually it's called a counter control loop. We know how many times the loop will execute, we use the for loop. When we don't know how many times the loop will execute, it's good to use the while loop with a, a condition or a sentinel value. So again, thank you for your time and see you in the next lectures.